Okay, we are recording. I thought it was two fifteen. You thought it was two fifteen? Maybe I'll give us a few. Yeah, more. I had I had that written down too. You had two fifteen written down. Okay, all right. We'll just wait a little. All right. So I'm starting the recording. It says it's recording, which is great. Um, so today in our group dynamics lecture, we are going to be going through um, all the different things about group effectiveness and roles, um, which roles lead into group effectiveness. There's a couple PowerPoints that we will be following on Canvas. Um, I'm just going to pull those up. Um, and I believe I can share my screen with you if it's easier to do it that way. Um, so yeah. I have too many screen options. Here we go. That's not the screen I wanted. Okay, can you all see my PowerPoint? Okay, great. Um, let me get this a little bit bigger. Um, so um, week two, so our objectives are to be under, having a better understanding of group effectiveness because you guys are gonna be leading groups. So you want to be able to incorporate all these elements that we're gonna talk about in your group that all be part of your rubrics. Um, so it's important that you understand all these concepts. Um, so on the slides, um, we'll just go through them step by step. Um, so first off, um, it talks about performance and it's just noted in our textbook about this comment about um, it's judged by internal group members and external, but the internal cannot be replaced. So I think that's really a reflection on like your own um, feelings of ownership over the group or group effectiveness or your perception of how things are going. So no matter what um, someone else says about your group or um, things you've heard about the group, it can't be replaced. It can't replace how you feel about it as a member of the group um, was all that meant. And so then just really staying connected to people that you're working with and seeing how they perceive um, how things are going, how their needs are being met, um, things like that. Um, so then um, we get to talk about process. Um, there's more information on each of these slides as well. Um, we just got started, so you are not late. Um, so welcome. Um, so we're talking about group effectiveness and um, we're just getting started about process. Oh. We're gonna have to back up. There are more people joining us. Um, we weren't sure. So we decided since there was a bunch of us waiting that we would go ahead and get started. So we're just gonna back up a minute. Um, so we're talking about group effectiveness today and um, all the components that go into it. When you're leading your groups, all of these things will be elements that you'll wanna consider um, that to make sure that they are in your group. Um, so group process, um, we're gonna go on to the next. I, yeah, we're gonna go talk about all these things in detail. Um, they kind of all fit together. There's a lot of overlap between structure, process and content. So let's take a closer look at each of those. Um, first structure. So structure refers to all the characteristics um, like the, like the um, shared mission, um, just like we talked about last time about how we want to have common goals and have people identify how they relate to this group by um, getting input from other people and having everyone have the same vision about what's going on in your group. Um, so I keep getting people adding in, so I'm sorry, I seem very distracted. Um, so the more input we get and the more ownerships or the more that people contribute to that vision of what our goals are, the more meaningful it is, the more they'll create um, motivation and just be more engaged in the whole process. Um, 
So when you're doing groups, you want to consider like, did your group members have an ability to, you know, share in developing goals? Did they, um, are they really, you know, clear on what the purpose and the mission is of your group? Um, so you want to include everyone on those kind of decisions. Um, the structure, the structure, um, you can see on here that it, um, it's kind of led by the leader. The leader kind of helps define that structure. And um, I'm just glancing over at my notes too. Um, so there is a lot of overlap. I feel like I'm saying the same thing. Um, it's just, again, it's openly talked about and looked at like, what are our values and um, what's our group gonna look like? Um, I'm going to move on. Um, so anybody have, is anybody part of any groups that they, um, that they maybe help develop or they are actively involved in? Hold on. I lost my screen. Technical glitch. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have a group that they're involved in um, that maybe they were at from the beginning of the group or they um, have any observations about how a group came together? Did you have a part in saying like um, what the group was gonna look like, what the goals were, anything like that? doesn't sound like it. Um, so then we talk about process. Um, so process is um, how things are done and um, how the group works together and how you communicate with one another, um, how your group solves problems, how they deal with conflict, how, um, how you make decisions process is really kind of the, like some of the most important areas that you really want to spend more focusing on. Um, if there's a lot of conflict in the group or people don't communicate well, if they, um, if no one can make a decision, your group isn't going to be very effective. So um, figuring out ways to make the dynamics of the people in your group fit together, um, identifying like who, who's always um, causing problems or um, how to better reach um, a decision. I can think of lots of people who, when they're together, nobody wants to make a decision. They're just like, I don't care. Like you decide, like, I don't, I don't know. How are we going to decide? Like they never get anywhere because they can't decide. They're either just too nice and like just want someone else to make a decision or, um, or they just don't care or whatever, but they just don't seem to ever get anywhere because they can't make decisions. So figuring out how in your group you're going to communicate, you're going to solve problems, you're going to make decisions, and you're going to handle conflict. Um, those would all be things involved in this process stage. Um, so then um, process, again, more about process. Things I kind of jumped ahead about, making decisions. Um, so the leader doesn't always want to be the one to figure all this stuff out, though. You want to um, figure out the strengths of the people in your group and figure out those roles that we'll be talking about next um, to see how, um, how maybe other people can take the roles on for being the decision maker or the um, negotiator or different things like that. So when you're, um, when you're leading groups, you'll kind of want to develop those roles in people. Um, problem solving, identify like how you're going to solve a problem. Is there going to be like a negotiator? Um, things like that, like just figuring out your processes and having like a set of ground rules for problem solving. If no one can agree on something, how are you going to go about solving a problem? Um, are you going to look for um, an outside member of the group to help solve the problem? Or are you going to 
just negotiate. Um, those will be all things that we'll be looking at. Um, conflict management, we're going to be spending a lot of time on. Um, that's something that's difficult for a lot of people, and that's what we'll be spending our time in um, at lab tomorrow. Um, we're going to be starting working on that. Um, so understanding how you as a person respond to conflict and then how, um, how to effectively help other people in conflict. Um, so anybody want to do a breakout group? You guys all look so excited. Um, so we could do a couple minutes breakout, uh, maybe like five minutes. Um, talk about um, a group that maybe you were part of. Maybe it was when you were younger. Maybe it's currently. Maybe it's a group that you you know of that maybe a family member is in. Um, just some sort of group, um, and talk about like how are decisions made and how are problems handled. How's conflict handled? Like, can you picture any of these um, things going on in a group that you can picture? So I think I'll give you, I'm going to break you off into um, Zoom, we'll break you out into groups and then, and then it should bring you all back. Um, so I'm going to stop my screen share so I can send you off into groups to talk for about maybe like seven or eight minutes um, till about two, let's see, it's 218, so about 225. Um, so if, if I lose you, please come back. Um, but it is going to send you to groups. And then I think I just push a button to bring you all back. It'll give you like a one minute. Um, it'll give you a one minute prompt to rejoin the big group. So we're going to try this. So I'm going to break you out. Um, it is going to break you into groups of four. So I'm going to open all the rooms and um, did you each get an invitation to join a breakout room? Okay, so then you're going to accept that and then in a minute I'll, or in seven or eight minutes, I'll pull you all back. Right, it worked. You guys all came back too. That is awesome. Right? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't even think I lost anybody. I think I might have moved Hillary to a different room by accident because I thought she got left behind. So I hope I didn't boot her out of one room and into another room. Sorry, Hillary. Um, so anybody have anything they want to share? Any positives? Any like nothing to talk about or All right. Um, oh. I can share one that Mercedes All and I right. talked about. Great. You just said um, like groups that we've been a part of usually have been like sports. And then a lot of times we have like different levels of leadership. Like you'll have your coach who's like your main leader and then maybe like an assistant and then a captain. And a lot of times like the roles and decisions are like kind of split amongst them. Mm -hmm. But usually like the whole team was considered in making the decisions. Mm -hmm. Great, great example. Thank you, Emily. All right, anybody else? Okay. Um, so as you were talking, you probably talked about like somebody that kind of stood out as like the person who kind of facilitates more than someone else. Like there's usually one person that facilitates. Um, they say like in groups where it's like a therapy setting that for the facilitation, the group leader should really be very um, neutral, um, that they shouldn't really intervene, but try and more direct the people within the group to have all the decision-making power to um, figure out how to you know, work out conflict between each other. And maybe the facilitator helps that, but is really putting the job on figuring out all the decisions and all the problem solving on the people in the group. So to really be effective, you want the people in your group to solve all those problems um, and, to, um, and to figure out how to make things work. 
um, and you're just kind of keeping the ball rolling. So I have um, a visual I'm going to share and it's from one of the attached readings to this week that if you want, you can look at it for additional reference. Um, so I'm just going to share that screen image. Here it is. Um, it's from the Schwartz article. So it just talks about this, um, the key elements of the skilled facilitator. Um, so when you are making your groups, um, you kind of want to keep all these things in mind. Um, that there's, um, I'm just going to let you guys look through them as like a reference. Um, some of these things, we're going to talk about some more of these defining terms. But just so you know, there's like um, this whole article that talks about the skilled facilitator and it talks about all the um, elements that should be within there. So it kind of defines all those things. Um, and um, the other part of being a skilled um, facilitator or having an effective group, um, there's another visual in here. Um, that talks about um, forming the ground rules for your group. And so if there's consistent ground rules in a group, then it just shares more cohesion. Um, but just like setting those ground rules is a really good way to start your groups and to have everybody on the same page. So another thing just to keep in mind as you're forming, as you're developing your groups. Um, so just wanted to point those out that those are in there. Um, yeah, so with ground rules, um, they just help increase the productivity and um, just give people um, kind of that common ground so everyone's on the same playing field. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go back to our PowerPoint. Um, And okay, I just got to scroll down a little bit. Um, talked about those. Okay, so the content. Um, the content is like what they're actually working on. Like, um, are we all working on a common problem or a common way to develop communication? Um, what's your kind of your common theme of your group? Um, these are some of the elements included in that comment, that content, that there's a clear mission values. Um, Maybe, maybe the members of your group need training or materials or resources, um, things like that to have the skills that they need to participate. So those would all be things considered in your content. Um, I'm not gonna make you break out again. Okay, um, for time's sake, we are gonna move on and talk about roles. Um, but before we do, just recalling that group effectiveness um, has these key elements of the content, the process, and the structure. Um, and um, all of that information was from the Schwartz article that's attached. So we are going to we're going to start our discussion about roles, which is in our other PowerPoint. So when you guys were talking in your small groups about your teams, um, as you're picturing members of those groups, you're probably picturing that each person has brings their own set of strengths and weaknesses to their group. Um, and understanding those um, roles that maybe they're going to be best suited for. So we, um, we're starting to kind of look at our own characteristics and how we function and having a better understanding of how we function so that we can recognize those characteristics in other people. 
and help them identify what roles maybe they're best suited for. Um, so let's see, it's helpful to distinguish between leadership roles that, the, that help the group accomplish its task and roles that help the group build and maintain itself as a group. Um, so roles. Um, so this is all about how individuals interact um, and refers to all of the like, so how they interact. So there's going to be someone in the role that's going to be um, like the person who does all the like is maybe really good at brainstorming and coming up with tons of ideas. And then there's going to be a person who um, who thinks of all the details and within your group, you're going to start to identify those strengths and you're going to help them um, be able to do things together and develop that group cohesion. Um, these are all different tasks or th things that might describe a person in your group. Um, and we're going to get to know these a little bit more with our activities that we have planned for group. Um, you can see there are lots of roles. There are three categories of roles. Um, there are um, I think we talked about that already. So there are three types of roles. Oh, I guess I'm ahead of myself. Um, so within your roles, I, I am just not thinking super clearly because I think I'm feeling very warm. So I apologize. Um, these are more just, just descriptions of different roles. Um, yeah. I think for today, I'm just not feeling all that well that we're going to end group. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I just cannot think super clearly and I feel like I, my fever is going up. So I am just going to have to stop for today. So I hope that I'm better by tomorrow. I will get some rest and hopefully I won't be sick. Um, but you can tell I'm like red and flushed and I'm just not feeling very well. So um, we're going to stop for today. So you guys have a good day. Stay safe. Um, don't get COVID. And I will hopefully see you all tomorrow. Yeah, feel better. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Take care. Thank you. I think before I wanted to leave, I wanted to make sure I knew where we were meeting. It's 570 or I forget. 571. Yes. So I sent out a link today in your it, to your email and or no, I think I might have posted it right on 571's announcements. Um, do you want to look before I go? Okay, Friday 8:50. Okay. okay. I, I hadn't I didn't find I didn't find it when I asked you about it earlier, but I got it now. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.